Hey guys, it's me, the Bingy to do, and I'm gonna read some bad fan fiction for you, cause I'm tired, it's 4 a.m. I can't, I can't believe this. I've never done a Sonic fan fiction, and you, if you know me, you know that f Sonic has a special place in my heart as the worst thing ever. I hate it so much, which of course means I know a lot about it. You can't hate something without knowing a lot of. I'm tired, okay? It is late, and I am so out of it, so... I'm going to turn down the volume a bit. And we're going to have a little ASMR Sonic fan fiction reading. Have you ever had ASMR before? It's good. This is <laughs> This is called Sonic the Dark Hedgehog by Matt the Writer 072. And here's the synopsis. The world is rocked when Sonic and his friends are transported to our planet and they instantly achieve celebrity status. Soon after, Dr. Eggman invades Earth and successfully captures Sonic! Exclamation point. With Sonic under his diabolical command, the world faces a far greater danger than could ever have been anticipated. One chapter, 1,400 words. Okay? This is going to be really good. Disclaimer, I do not own anything from Sonic the Hedgehog franchise or any characters associated with the franchise. All rights belong to Sega. This is not my intellectual property, and no financial gain is made from this nor will be sought. This is purely for entertainment purposes only. Redundancy. Chapter 1. Chaos Control. Our story begins on Mubius, a distant Earth-like planet that supports life. It is also home to a blue hedgehog that is able to run at supersonic speeds, hence his name, Sonic. Ooh, this is great already. Sonic was doing his... Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sonic was doing his usual business. To stop his narch, his narch, <laughs> help me, to stop his arch nemesis, an evil mad scientist named Dr. Eggman. <laughs> Sonic's red and white shoes were spinning in a blur as he ran towards Eggman's base, which was a giant egg-shaped building made entirely out of steel. Sonic grinned and there was a hint of a sparkle in his green eyes as he neared the base. Are Sonic's eyes green? They must be. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm doing a quick Google here. Sonic. See, the thing is, like... They are. Of course they are. You need blue and green and red, and they have them all. Of course, of course, except usually they're black. Green is like periodically every once in a while. Oh my god, the movie? I can't wait. <laughs> anyway, suddenly a monstrous figure burst out of the ground just a few feet in front of Sonic. It was nothing but one of Eggman's many robotic creations. That didn't stop Sonic, however. O of course it wouldn't. You just said it was nothing but. Before he could even clearly see what the robot looked like, Sonic jumped, curled into a ball, and rocketed right through the robot's body, destroying it. Sonic landed safely on the ground, but Eggman wasn't done with his speedy foe yet. <laughs> an enormous cannon slid out from an opening in the wall and fired a powerful laser straight at Sonic. Leap <sighs> out of the way just in time. We're 
coming, Sonic. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I, dude, dude, reading, reading, reading Sonic fan fiction in like an ASMR style is going to be the death of me. <laughs> I can't handle it. Okay, let me readjust. Okay. We're coming, Sonic! <laughs> Alright, we're coming, Sonic. A voice was heard from overhead before Sonic heard the drone of a propeller-driven biplane. Miles Tails Prower, a yellow-orange fox and Sonic's best friend, was piloting the blue and yellow plane, which he named the Tornado. A pink female hedgehog named Amy Rose sat behind him, clutching onto the back of Tails' seat. She, You don't need to introduce them if the only people who are going to be reading this are me, who hates it, and other people who love it. Those are the two. There's no one who is, like, lukewarm about Sonic or ignorant about Sonic, and the first thing they go to is Sonic colon the dark hedgehog. <laughs> Sorry, I almost threw up. That happens. She looked really worried about the situation down at Eggman's base, but that was perfectly typical of Amy, since she had a major crush on Sonic. That's true. I know the lore. The cannon then aimed itself at Tails' plane. Before Tails could react, the cannon fired, sending a blinding laser beam straight at the tornado. A singeing burst of heat from the laser came so close to Amy that it missed her by less than an inch. That was the least of their worries, as the left side of the tornado was emitting black smoke. Tails! The plane's on fire! Amy shrieked. You know what's funny? The grammar's good. I'm like a little upset that the grammar is good. I have seen one comma splice this whole time, and even good writing gets comma splices. I was reading a Margaret Atwood novel, and there were comma splices just everywhere. <laughs> the editor didn't even pick up on those. Oh boy, oh my god. Anyway, we're going to save Sonic, Tails confidently replied as the plane began to spiral out of the sky. Tails frantically pushed a few buttons, and a bright golden ring fell out of the bottom of the plane. Sonic jumped up over a few small robots, vaulted himself into the air, and caught the ring. The ring seemed to have made him a little more powerful, as he was ab able to effortlessly destroy the robots guarding the base. So, in the canon that isn't the games, like in the canon of quote-unquote story Sonic, right? He still absorbs golden rings into his body? There is something a little arcane about that <laughs> that I don't really want to think about too hard. Just before the cannon fired again, Sonic was able to sidestep, and then he jumped straight through the cannon itself. Exclamation point. There was a massive explosion, and for a split second, all hope seemed to be lost. However, the smoke cleared, and the blue hedgehog emerged unscathed. So, for actual real, there's only been like two errors. That was another one of them. So, <laughs> I, I hate descriptive pronouns. Don't the blue hedgehog emerge unscathed. Sonic, please. Meanwhile, things weren't going as well for Tails and Amy. The tornado touched down at the fuselage. I can't believe you used the word fuselage. What is happening? The fuselage left behind a trail of smoke and fire. The plane was still moving very fast, and to make matters worse, the plane was heading straight for a wall of rock! Exclamation point. We're gonna crash! Amy screamed as the plane barreled towards what appeared to be certain death. A flash of red fur was seen. That's also bad. It's passive voice. And the wall shattered just before the plane was about to slam into the rock. The plane safely skidded to a stop. Their savior was none other than Knuckles, a red echidna with sharp knuckles on his fists that could break through almost anything. I can't believe this is like a primer to Sonic. It's like baby's first Sonic. It's it. Basically, it's really good. This is what I'm getting at. One moment. Anyway, Ocean Man, take me to the corner of the land with a Sonic. Ocean boy. Tails asked, what brings, what brings you here, Knuckles? I think he's, he's a, what brings you here, Knuckles? That's what it sounds like, more or less. Knuckles didn't reply. He's too cool. He was watching the events that were occurring at Dr. Edman's base. Tails and Amy walked up behind him to watch, too. By this point, Sonic successfully infiltrated the base. The narrow corridors twisted and turned and around every corner. Lasers fired and robots were ready to take on Sonic. 
<laughs> Sounded like hooked on phonics. <laughs> Still energized by the ring, Sonic jumped over and slid under every ra laser, destroyed every robot, and used the shiny robots as mirrors to reflect the dangerous red beams back into the laser guns, destroying them in the process. You're just writing a Sonic level. In the very center of the base was a circular room with numerous switches and hundreds of screams. Screams with an N. Dr. Eggman was sitting in a large black armchair, watching Sonic on one of the monitors. He earned his nickname because his body was very fat, and it was somewhat shaped somewhat like an egg. If you want to know his real name, it's Dr. Ivo Robotnik, but you can just call him Eggman for now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, oh my god. He wore a red lab jacket with a white zipper down the middle and a white and white zipper-like markings on the sleeves. Zipper-like is hyphenated, and that is correct. Zipper-like here is accurate. That is correct. I am, I am a little upset though. His spindly legs were a comical contrast to his morbidly obese body, and his face was dominated by a rather bushy brown mustache, a pair of frameless pince-nez glasses with tinted. Perfectly circular lenses concealed his eyes, and a pair of green-lensed goggles were perched on top of his shiny, bald head. All of this is, one, correct, two, elegant and correct description, and three, you use the word pince-nez, which is correct in this context. It's also not a common word. I'm sorry, I'm just a little upset right now. <laughs> Dr. Eggman wasn't the only one in the morning, not only me, wasn't the only one in the room. His two hench bots, Deco and Bo Bucko, De Deco, Deco and Bacco, accompanied him. A large robot with a gun was waiting by the door to apprehend Sonic upon his impending arrival. I swear to God that's what it says. I'm not, I'm not doing this. Deco was a tall gold robot, while Bos Bucko was a short silver robot. They helped Eggman use the machinery in his lab, but they were somewhat clumsy and stupid at the same time. Where did the pince nest go? Where did that kind of description go? That's, re I, that's really funny. It's that kind of funny where you don't laugh at it, but it's just, like, deeply funny. The evil egg-shaped scientist opened... <laughs> oh, do it. Stop it now. The evil egg-shaped scientist opened a drawer which contained six glowing gems of various colors called Chaos Emeralds. <sniffs> oh, sorry, it's tired and I'm late. The Eggman was holding a seventh emerald in his hand, but he was still waiting for Sonic to arrive before he would do anything with it. You're stupid. Within five seconds, he heard a loud rush of wind come from an adjacent corridor before the door to Eggman's lab was knocked down. Sonic stood in the doorway with his hands on his hips and a victorious grin on his face. The doctor swiveled around in his armchair to face Sonic. Well! <laughs> uh, if it isn't my little blue friend, I have all seven emeralds here and I save this emerald just for you! Eggman taunted, pointing a gloved finger at the hedgehog. All I have to do is place it in this drawer right here. I won't let you... What What does Sonic sound like? I don't want to do the actual Sonic voice, because everyone does that. What does Sonic sound like in my canon? I won't let you do this, Eggman. <laughs> Sonic attempted to run straight at his foe. But unbeknownst to him, the robot had already wrapped a steel cable around the hedgehog's legs and feet. Just use the names, which were then clamped down to the floor. He did not have any chance of stopping his egg-shaped opponent. I... Use the names. I'm up, uh, you're upsetting me greatly. Ha ha ha! Eggman cackled with delight. Here we go! He placed the seventh Chaos Emerald into the drawer, glowing with excitement now that he had all several seven emeralds. You already did. Suddenly, a bright flash of light erupted from the emeralds in the drawer, and Eggman's expression instantly morphed from evil glee to fear. Oh no, he cried. I forgot this would happen. How could I? It's like... A person who can actually write thinks that writing is a sonic plot. You know what I mean? Like, it's it takes all of the characteristics of your average sonic plot and, like, expresses them through actual writing. And it is so gloriously strange. This is great. <laughs> this is why I do this. This is why I like fan fiction. The light completely engulfed Sonic, Dr. Edman, Deco, and Boko. Deco and Boko, as well as the entire base. 
It then radiated out towards the pile of rock that Tails, Knuckles, and Amy were standing on, and engulfed them too. Oh no, Tails said. There's a lot of that, too. We're in chaos control! Chaos control! The trio had stunned looks on their faces. Okay, never mind. Before the white light surrounded them, Sonic and his friends had no idea what was going to happen to them, or if they'd even live to tell the tale. There isn't another chapter yet. It's this, this. This is it. It's over now. So... Here's the author's note at the end of the page. Uh, it's very important that I read this to you. I hope you enjoy the intro to my latest story. I actually started writing this story back in 2009, long before I created my account here. In other words, this chapter was written 10 years ago. P-Face. It will be a while before the next chapter is published, because I have plenty of other stories to finish first. Most of my writing is done in the Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fandom. So if you're a fan of that franchise, you can check out my other projects there. Stay tuned, everyone, smiley face. P.S. I know this intro may seem similar to the first episode of Sonic X, but rest assured the story will take a completely different turn from here on. What? Matt the Writer 072. Thank you. For whatever chaotic nonsense this was. Like, just the juxtaposition of the writing against the topic is enough to make me laugh very much. <laughs> so... I'm going to go look at his Charlie and the Chocolate Factory fan fictions. I want to see exactly what that's all about. So I'm, um, <laughs> I'll see you next time, boy.